Amen. Jeremiah chapter 18, verse number 1. Amen. Uh, we'll read these down through verse number 6 here and, and, and look at this a while. Amen. The word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord saying, and when you read those words right there, you read those words before you read a scripture, uh, it's pretty important. Amen. God spoke to Jeremiah and gave him these words saying, Arise and go down to the potter's house. And there I will cause thee to hear my words. Then I went down to the potter's house, and behold, he wrought a work on the wheels. And the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter. So he made it again another vessel, and it seemed good to the potter to make it. Then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, O house of Israel, can I not do with you as this potter, saith the Lord? Behold, as the clay is in the potter's hands, so are ye in mine hand, O house of Israel. Dear God, we thank you for your word. Lord, I know that you're real, you're powerful, and you're, you're, you're all full of wisdom, God. And if somehow we could glean wisdom and knowledge from your word tonight, it would be so beneficial to us, Lord. God, and, and I, I know that it just any, any part that we can put into our hearts, God, will we'll grow and, and will make us be more mature Christians. Lord, I pray that you would speak to us tonight. God, help us to realize, Lord, that we need to be uh, something, that, so, a person and a, a life that you can work with. God, I thank you for each one that's here, Lord, and I believe that we're going to hear from you. I believe somebody's going to receive a word from you tonight, God, that they need to hear, that they've been waiting on, Lord. Speak and let your voice be heard. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. He said that the, the clay is in the potter's hands. And uh, we all know that mankind, our spirits, our lives, and, and, and every part of us, I do believe, needs to be in the hands of the potter. Completely submitted. Completely allowed him to do what he wants to do with us. And nowhere in the Word of God do I read. Nowhere in this story. And I think there's a... A, uh, a scripture in Isaiah that makes reference to what God creates and the things that, you know, the uh, talks about the pot shirt and the potter and all that stuff. But the, pot, the clay has no say-so at all in what the potter wants to make of it. Amen? Uh, when he puts the, the, the clay on the potter's wheel and begins to begins to uh, work with the clay. The clay has no way, and it has no voice. It has really no way of letting the potter know, hey, I want to be this. I want to be this type of vessel. I want to be a bowl. I want to be a vase. I want to be a, a glass, a tumbler, a, a saucer, or a plate. We, we don't have that choice. God knows what's best for us, and He knows what ministry and what calling and, and, and what desire. Uh, according to our, you know, I believe this. We, we cannot make everybody have the per same personality. Everybody has different personalities. We, I was talking with someone today, and we was, y'all don't know this. As a matter of fact, I've never met him other than just I, I love to listen to him on Facebook, and he, he, he and we was talking, me and another fellow was talking about him and, and uh, talking about his personality type and that the type of personality that that fellow has. You just think, you know, ain't nobody going to uh, manipulate him or control him. He's going to follow the, you know, and, and there's some people that, you know, you've heard of type A personality, type B personality, and all, but we're all different, but God knows what to make out of each one of us to suit what we are the very best. Amen. I, I honestly believe, and you know, uh, I honestly believe if you've got a very outgoing personality, and you're, you're, you know, God, God may call you to do something different than He does somebody that's very shy and withhold, withheld. And you may say, "Well, God will give you boldness." God, I never read in the Bible anywhere God will make us a new creature, but I, we we pretty much going to see keep the same personality we have. Amen. Pray. I know. I know. God will give us boldness, and I've seen it happen time and time again. But the type of clay determines the type of vessel, and God knows how to best use each one of us. Amen. He knows. Uh, so just put your trust in the Lord. We can't tell Him what we want to be. We have to just be pliable in the hands of the Lord. And uh, I've never worked on a pottery wheel. I've never, I've never sat down and put clay on a potter's wheel. And begin. anybody in here ever done that? I keep. I've got a little. I've bit my lip one time, and I got a little, just a little thing sticking out there. And every now and then I'll bite it. So mm, that's not fun. But if anybody, I, I know working, and I done. 
done some looking up on pottery and, and how the potter's wheel work. Working on working clay on a potter's wheel is not easy. I, I know I've seen it in action on maybe on videos or TV, and it looks like boy they're just uh, they got it all in control. But it's not as easy as it looks. That 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 clay has to be just right. If if you're if you don't know what you're doing when you put that clay on that wheel and you start spinning that wheel, that clay will fly off. Amen. That clay will fly off of that wheel and liable to hit somebody in the nose or something. But uh, it, it, it will it will do it will it, it's very you have to learn to make shapes. You don't sit down at the potter's wheel the very first time and create a beautiful vessel because you do not have the experience. Your your hands are not trained and your mind and and the way your fingers have to work on that clay. It takes experience to make the kind of vessel that that the potter desires to have. Amen. How many's glad that we're we're in the hands of a very experienced potter God knows just uh, we sang that song hadn't sang it in a while I guess me and somebody else is going to have to learn the, well sister Vicky sings it but the potter knows the clay the potter knows exactly what we are and how how he can mold us and how he can use us and, and, and how he can form us into. and it's through the experience God has worked on a few people over the past thousands of years Amen. Are y'all pretty confident in the fact that God knows how to deal and God knows how to, to shape people in what he sometimes it, it takes a while. Sometimes it takes some some starting over. Some, is any is anybody in this place tonight that he's ever had to start over on that you feel like that he's had to spend a little extra time on, that he's had to take out a few pebbles here and there and, and make us into what we are. I'm still not perfect, you're still not perfect, but thank God God has not thrown us on the scrap heap amen hallelujah praise the Lord and he has to learn and the potter through experience and through practice has to learn how to make the shapes that he uh, that he desires to make and the clay is subject to the potter's hand uh, there's no shape going to take place on that on that lump of clay without the hand of the potter any shape that's made, any vessel that's made is subject to the hand of the potter. He, you know, he knows just where to put this kind of pressure. If he, if he wants to make a vase that's, that's big here and goes up and then it flares out, he knows just how to, what pressure to put in the points of that, that clay to make that vessel. And the, sub, the shape of the vessel is subject to the hand of the potter. Amen. Hallelujah. So if we will let God use us, amen, we, you know, clay that's on that, that potter's wheel to us, but there's a difference between our lives and, what's, and that actual clay that's on that wheel of the potter. We are clay with a wheel, not a wheel, a wheel. Amen. We're clay that's got a wheel. We're clay that's got, a, got, a, got our minds Said, and, and we're clay sometimes that's stubborn. Anybody ever been stubborn when it comes to God dealing with you? Am I the only one? Amen. Am I the only one sometimes that God tells you something and you just let it go kind of, you, you, you hear it, but you don't. And then a little bit down the road, you see where you should have listened. Amen. You should have followed the ways of the Lord. Hallelujah. Why? Because we are subject to his hand. We've got a will. We've got a mind of our own. Can somebody say amen? How many of you parents can testify that your kids have got a mind of their own? Amen. Or your husband or your wife. <laughs> I'll cover that too. Praise the Lord. But 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 we are a we are clay with the wheel. We, you know, and it's sad to say this, and I know that I'm I'm uh, I'm here and there, but I, I'm trying to stay on point tonight. We may never see there's some folks, I believe, that never see the plan of God for their life because their will gets in the way. Amen? How many would like to let God and, and allow God to just use you in a way that He chooses? And we say that, boy, that's a good testimony. I've heard people get up and testify. I just want to be used. I want to be in the will of God. Oh, God, just use me like you want me to. They don't, I mean, you better. Amen? Hallelujah. To really be used. Uh, there's so many times that God cannot really form us into the vessel He wants simply because we're human and we have a will. Now that's not necessary. That don't necessarily make you a bad person. 
There's not a one of us in here that hadn't got a will, that hadn't got some things that we just kind of clamp down on when, when, when we see that we're going to have to sacrifice it. Anybody else? Am I the, amen? There, I mean, we do, and I, I, I believe in being real. I, I, you know, we ain't all, all we, we're not sitting here tonight a bunch of, of angels that knows how to move and just, just, we're just pliable. I believe every one of us have things in our life that we know need to be fixed. That we know that, that if we'll just allow God to. But sometimes our will and the, and, and just will not let it go. Will not turn it loose. Amen. But I want to, I really want to be what God wants me to be. But when we say that, we better realize what we may have to go through. What, what He may have to shape us by, uh, like and, and what pressure he may have to put on us but oh my t my Lord in the end we'll be a vessel of honor and in the end we'll be we'll be able to stand and say God I you know I, I just want, I want that for all of us and sometimes it, it just don't happen because we have a will but you know I don't believe I don't you know I, I've never read in the word of the Lord where God sent somebody to hell just for being stubborn a little bit every now and then if he did, boy, we'd all be in trouble, wouldn't we? Amen. Now, uh, I, I believe, you know, if you can absolutely go against the will of God with your will and, and turn against him. But uh, God knows. He knows that we're just human. He knows what he's working with. Woo! He knows what he's working with. He created us. Amen. Uh, y'all don't, don't follow sports at all, but... but if y'all do the big Antonio Brown thing, you know, uh, they seen him, shipped him off to Oakland. Oakland knew what they was getting. The Raiders knew what they was getting. There he gets. He gets, throws a fit and goes to New England. And now whether it's true or not, and I hate that, I hope it's not. But now something else has come up and, and somebody said, well, the, the, the Patriots knew what they were getting. Hallelujah. God knows what he's working with. Don't y'all feel sorry, a little bit sorry for the Lord now when you, when you look at the mess that we get in sometimes? He knows what he's working with. Hey, man, we just have to be patient. Well, whoever's on the wheel at the time that we may be in the fire, we need to be patient with those that's on the wheel. Hey, man, we just need to, to keep in mind that God's working with them. Hey, there's been times as pastor I want to absolutely get people sometimes and just, just say, get them, you know, get them. I just got to be patient. Amen. Hallelujah. We're the clay. And there are some types of clay that are unusable. Amen. There are some types of clay that are unusable. I want to I look at three different types and, and just kind of, I, I, I want to make sure that, that we never get to this point. Uh, the reason I come on Wednesday night and when, when the house is not as full as it is on Sunday morning and Sunday night, the reason I come here and I, I put effort and time into getting the, the mind of God and, and, and stand up here and preach to y'all, I don't want y'all to be lost. I want, I want, I want y'all to be able to be the best that you can. Amen. And, and maybe some little thing I say, some little effort I put into to bringing forth the word, some, some word that God gives me to tell you might help somebody. If it helps just one out of this group here tonight, tonight has been worth it. Amen. Hallelujah. But we, there, are clay, there, is type, there are some types of clay that are unusable. The first type of clay that's unusable is clay that has dried out. Amen. And y'all, I mean, you ain't got to be super spiritual to know what I'm referring to there. How many times have we become dry? Anybody ever got dry spiritually? And I ain't talking about just dry church. I, I, you know, that's one thing that, you know, there would probably be some, some, some people that come to visit us sometimes that they would think we're a dry church. They're just dead. Matter of fact, well, I ain't going to. One fellow visited one time and went and told that he liked to fell off the seat because somebody shouted. He couldn't just couldn't believe it. I, I wanted to tell him a thing or two. <laughs> but, but it's more to being dry than just... But I don't want... A, and we don't have a dead, dry church. 
Amen. The presence of the Lord. I feel his presence here tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. And just because it's not the... But God cannot use clay and, and the potter can't make anything out of clay that it's done dried up. Amen. Over a period of time, uh, and I think we all have, have probably faced this. How many is, has through your life that there's been times that over a period of time we may allow our spiritual lives to dry up? Amen. And, and, and when that happens, we, you know, there's people that hear the word. There's people that come to church. There's people that participate in worship that do all that. But nothing has an effect on their lives anymore. And that's a sad situation. I, I, I worry about, there's, there's people that I, that I get really concerned about. because, And, and I know I, I've made my last judgment call on when I'm preaching or people are worshiping. I made my last judgment call on looking at somebody and trying to judge if they're in the spirit or not, if, if they're running or jumping. We don't know what's going on. But as pastor, as shepherd, I know there are people that, that maybe even in this congregation, it's very few, and I and I'm, don't worry about the names or who that, but I realize that something is, that nothing touches. There's people, there's some people that nothing will touch anymore. Man, their, their soul is just dried up. Their soul has lost every bit of, of, of pliableness that, that it had. Oh, my Lord. And, and that's a very, you do not want to get in that position. You do not want to get in that shape. I want to tell you, if you feel like, if you, if you feel like you need strength, cry out to God. If you feel like you need a refreshing, don't hold back, cry out to God. You don't have to wait till you come to church. You can get a hold of the God. You can have a prayer meeting in your home. Amen. Praise God. Don't ever get to the point that nothing in the Spirit touches you and, and you just seem like you're just uh, drying up. I don't want anybody to dry up. Amen. Second Peter chapter number 2. I want to start reading a verse of Scripture here in chapter number 2, verse number 20. For if they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled therein and overcome the latter end is worse with them than the beginning. For it had been better for them to not have known the way of righteousness than after they have known it to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them. But it is happened unto them according to the true proverb, the dog is turned to his own vomit again and the sow that was washed to her wallowing in the mire. The second epistle, beloved, I now write unto you in both which I stir up your pure minds by the way of remembrance. Amen. He talks about those people that are, it'd be better for them to not to even know the righteousness of God is to know it and turn back to the walla and the vomit. That kind of clay God really has no control over. Do you know it's your choice? You know, it's your choice of what you allow God. You, you cannot choose the vessel, but you can choose to be used and, and, and shaped in the hand of God. The clay, and, and sometimes, uh, you know, the only, but I, I, I want to tell you, the clay can be crushed, and the clay can be crushed into pieces, and the, and the process started all over again. I believe the Lord can take what's useless and, and, and make it, good again. Amen. I know we can. And I, I want to go to Hosea the, the second chapter and verse number six and read a verse here. We all know the story uh, about, uh, about Hosea and Gomer. If you haven't, that, that's a beautiful story. I love that, I love that song uh, uh, that's, that Brother Gerald Crabb wrote about I've come to take you home. I wish, I wish some of our group bunch would learn to sing that. A beautiful story of how that Gomer was a type of Israel and she turned away from Hosea as a type of Israel turning away from God. Amen. But God was trying his best to break her to get her back to where he could use her in the second chapter of, of uh, Hosea in verse number 6. He said, Therefore, behold, I will hedge up thy way with thorns and make a wall that she shall not find her path. In other words, I will put her in a place where she can't wander. I'll, I'll put all these things around her. I'll hedge her up. Amen. Oh, God. Uh, it, whatever it takes. Lord, don't ever let me get to the point that I cannot be used and pliable in your hands. Amen. Amen. Uh, 
So you've got that clay that's just, that's just dry, that's just dried out. Uh, I kind of picture it as in old uh, flat sand rocks. You know, those flat sand rocks that you find out there that are flat, that skips a good across the pond, that started out as just sand. But over time and the heat and all that stuff, it formed a hardness. Oh, I don't want my heart to become. The Bible talks about a hardened heart. And a seared conscience. And it's sad to say that there are people, there are souls that more than likely will never be touched and never respond to the touch of God because their heart has become hardened. Man, and that's scary. I do not want to get in that position. The second kind of clay that cannot be used is, is clay that lacks moisture. I'm not talking about it's a little better than just completely dried up. It just lacks the right amount of moisture. It's soft enough to exist, but it's hard enough that the master can't shape it. it. It's soft enough to be classified as clay, but it's not soft enough that the master can take it and shape it into what he wants it to be. And you'd be surprised at the people that fit in this category in our world today. At the churches that are filled with this kind. Amen. And I'm not judging. I'm just telling you that. Many folks are content to do just enough. Many folks are content to get by just enough. Do just as much. They, they, they're, they lack in moisture. They, they're, 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 they're soft enough to know that they need to let God touch them. But they, they, they're not really committed enough to let God do what He really wants to do with them. Amen. I want to go to, to uh, 1 Corinthians, the third chapter. Let's keep up with the time here. Because I done told y'all that would take 13 minutes off my preaching. I don't know where to add that 13 minutes or just play like I played that. But uh, we'll just go to get through. How about that? Amen. 1 Corinthians, chapter number 3. Oh, I bit my lip again. Verse number 12. Now if any man build upon this foundation, gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, and stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be tried with fire. Amen. And if it, if it abides, which he built thereupon, he hath received it. And it talks about the work. And, and, and sometimes uh, we, we spend so much time investing into temporal things. We, we really are not pliable enough for God to really do with us what he wants to do. Because we, we, we got too much interest in the temporal things. You know, those, we, we, those people go to worship, like I said a while ago, they love God, but they never surrender their will to God. Amen. You'll find them in, t in church every time the doors are open. You'll, you'll find them doing the, the business of the church and, and, and taking part in all the activities. But there's just something there that will not allow them to really be committed to letting God make out of them what He wants to make of them. Amen. They, they lack that moisture. Just, they're just enough to, to be moist, but they're not enough for... They're not soft enough for the hand of God to make. And, and it's not bad people. Those people aren't bad. They just don't stay together spiritually. Amen? They just fall apart spiritually a lot. I, Lord, I've seen people before, and, you know, I never will forget it. My daddy just had a way with words. I mean, you just have to know him, and he meant no harm. He just, he was just dumb. Uh, I remember... Years ago, I mean, I was a kid, probably less than 10 years old. And I had a fellow that would come every, every Sunday night. Oh, every Sunday night, he'd come pray through. And which is all right. And then here he'd, he'd, go, he'd go, get, go crazy through the week. About every other Sunday night, he'd come pray through. One night he'd come up there, and I mean, we'd gather around the altar, and we'd pray and sweat and just put ourselves, really pray it. And Daddy, in his way, he took his lip out, and he said, next time he comes up there and prays through, just somebody get a hammer and knock him in the head. <laughs> <laughs> but you got, you know, those, those, 
there, there's, there's people that, that they'll, you see them up and down. You know why? Because they really like the moisture. Their spirit. They just don't stay together spiritually. What makes clay softer? Anybody ever watch the potter work? What does he do? He's got a, some water there by the potter's wheel, and he'll take water and put on that clay, and it helps it to stay soft. And that's the same way the Holy Ghost does for us. Amen. It helps us. It allows, we, it, we need to allow the Spirit of God to soften us, to work on us, to convict us. If, if God convicts you, pay attention to what He's convicting you about. How many has had God to speak to you about something that you need to, you know what, that's, he's trying to make you softer. He, 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 he knows he, you're well enough and you're soft enough that he can speak and you'll listen. He's trying to make you pliable enough that he can make you into what he wants you to be. Amen. When God begins to speak to you or convict you about something or direct you, obey. Because the more you obey, the more pliable you come in the hands of God. I don't want to lack moisture when it comes to to being shaped into what God wants me to be. And then you've got the third and final one. Clay that's got hidden air pockets. I remember making peanut brittle. Uh, I, I, Jimmy Wayne has said every now and then, we're going to start making some peanut brittle and selling it. Yeah. But they, they'd pour that, pour that peanut brittle up in that pan and they'd shake it to get them air pockets out of it. You know, just those air pockets. But there's a lot of times that God shapes the vessel. And the vessel can be shaped and it can look beautiful. It can be painted and it, it can just look so beautiful sitting there on the potter's wheel. And he'll leave it, you know, the potter will admire it. And it looks like, well, that's, you know, that's what I, I've shaped it into what I want it to be. But you know what the final test is for that piece of pottery? The fire. Amen? And if so happened that potter has worked a few hours on that piece of clay and he missed, and inside there's some hidden air bubbles, air pockets inside that vessel. When he puts it in the fire that fire will reveal if that clay is pure or not. Because when it goes in the fire, anybody know what heat does? It expands. It expands the air. But if that clay has hidden air pockets on the inside of it, if we've got hidden sin in our life, it will be revealed. That air pockets, when that vessel is put into that fire the air in those air pockets expand causing that vessel to burst and crack and it loses it may look good going in the fire but it can't stand through the fire amen how many wants to be able to go through the fire how many wants to say god whatever lord don't don't let me hide anything in my heart i you know it, just just repent and, and pour your heart out to god they can't see that hidden air, but the fire causes that air to expand and it results in the bursting of that vessel. It may look like a, a finished vessel, but hidden sin will cause that vessel to crack open and not go. I want to be able to go through the fire. I want to be able to stand when, when everything else is, 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 is falling around me, Lord. Give me the strength to stand. Take... Put, keep me on that wheel just as long as you need to. Spin every bit of air out of me, Lord. Amen. Matthew chapter 10. I've got three scriptures I want to read, and I, I'll let you go. Amen. Matthew chapter number 10, and verse number 26. Fear them not, therefore, for there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed and hid that shall not be known. Amen? God has a way. God has a way. And I know that, you know, uh, and I, I don't believe, I, I believe for the biggest part, most of you, I tell people when they visit here or ask about the church, I just, I tell folks what you see is what you get. We're not going to try to put on a show and, and try to act all this and that and be, 
different. I want you to be the same out there as you are here. I just want you to desire to be better here. I want you to be the same both pla- both places. How many wants to be the same around as you are? And I want to want to be the same out there that I am here. But sometimes we have to let God work on us and get those things out of our life that will cause us to break when we go through the fire. Amen. Psalms, the 32nd chapter, in verse number 5. I acknowledge my sin unto thee, and mine iniquity have I, have I not hid. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and thou forgavest the iniquity of my sin. You ain't got to stand up and tell everybody, but I want to tell you, when you confess it to the Lord, and you ask his forgiveness, it's gone. You know, I, I, I've seen people that think that if people do something, no matter how hideous it is, they've got to stand up and just tell everybody. That you, I, I, don't think, I don't think you've got to do that. And if you feel you need to, I believe you confess to the Lord and you and God, you make sure you're forgiven by Him. Amen? You make sure you're forgiven by Him. And I think there are some things that, that need to be handled, you know, as a body of Christ. And I, I do believe, you know, as, as the Bible teaches to do that. But there are some things that, that if you, you can talk to the Lord about and He can help you with it. Proverbs 28 and 13, I think. He that covereth his sins shall not prosper. But whoso confeth, confesseth and forsaketh them shall have mercy. How many wants mercy? I want mercy. God, I, I'm... I'm uh, I want to I want to be what you want me to be. And that, that's a mouthful. Do y'all really understand how big of a mouthful that is? God, make me what you want me to be. I mean, but he can. And he can make you into what he wants you to be. I don't believe there's anybody in this place that cannot reach the point in your life that God desires to shape you into. And you know what? When he reached that point, he's going to make you better. Reach that point, he's going to make you. He's still working on me. Amen. And, and you know, until we're, until we're changed, until this body is dead and we put on that immortality and, and, and we're raised from the dead incorruptible, we're not going to be perfect. I believe all this, I've said all this to say, i said all that to say this, we're not going to be perfect we just need to make sure that we stay pliable in God's hands amen make sure that we can allow him to work on us and not resist his hand and not resist sometimes the pressure that he wants to put on us Woo! I was uh, I'll not call the name but one of the uh, uh, one of our friends one of the the 10 church here uh, sent me a, a text the other day about you know it was really really had him having a tough day and it seemed like nothing was going right and, and I just felt like telling them, you know, before the wine, before the wine is made, the grapes have to be crushed. Before the lemonade is tasting good, the lemonades have to be squeezed. We just have to, sometimes we have to endure the pressure to be what God wants us to be. Don't, don't get so caught up in our selfishness and in our will. Amen. God, whatever you want, whatever you want, God, that's what I want. I believe we'd all say that. I believe we could all say that. God, whatever you want, that's what I want. Now, can we take it another? Now, taking it another step, whatever you want, God, make me into that. Now, that's that's a, that's that's a completely different statement there. But I believe we can do that. How many believes you can be what God wants you to be? Amen. I believe you can. I believe New Covenant Christian Assembly can be exactly what God wants us to be. And the, and the vessel and the, and, and the outreach and the, the church full of love and, and, and prayers and compassion and care that God wants us to be. Amen. And I thank God for what we're seeing. I thank God that people do have the desire. And uh, uh, like somebody told me just today or yesterday one, God's got great things, and we're going to see great things here. I believe that. I believe it. And God, 
I want to be a part of it. I want to be used. God make me that I can be used. That's You just flipped to, to a different chapter right there. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for being.